I'll speak ready? for everyone. Chris Doug. So I'm here. That's all Doug's here. Is Doug here? Ready? ready. A call to meet, order this meeting of the James City Service Authority for a regular meeting. Good afternoon, Mr. Powell. Good afternoon. Could you please call the roll? Mr. Eisenhower. Here. Mr. McGlennon. Here. Ms. Larson. Here. Mr. Hipple. Here. Ms. Sadler. Here. We'll just leave our meeting open for now. Continue with the uh, Mr. Hipple's portion of the meeting. Okay. I'll go ahead and bring this meeting, this is meeting, James City County Board of Supervisors meeting on June 27, 2023 at 1 p.m. Roll calls, please, sir. Here. 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 All right. Our first on our list is presentation, VDOT quarterly update. Mr. Carroll, how you doing, sir? Good, Chairman Hippo. How are you? Very good, sir. How are y'all doing today? Good. Doing how are fine. you? Thanks. Pretty good. Um, so this is the quarterly transportation update. Last time I was here was uh, end of February. Um, so we have had... 655 maintenance work orders come through our system since then. Uh, 583 of them have been completed. Uh, we have 61 of those outstanding, which was an 89% completion rate, uh, which comes through our system. A uh, few highlights of maintenance accomplishments. Uh, we did 323 drop inlet repairs, uh, cleaning and repairs. Uh, we 11,223 feet of ditch work. Uh, we did 220 potholes patched. Uh, we did 16 lane miles of sweeping, uh, pipe covert cleaning and repair, um, 7,545 feet, uh, roadway patching used four tons, brush cutting four shoulder miles, and picked up 80 adopter highway bags. <laughs> um, so we're in our mowing cycle. Um, should be complete close to 4th of July holiday. They are doing the primary and the secondary uh, within the county. Um, the next notice to proceed will be July 17th, and that will be a primary routes only uh, cut. Some of the current projects that we have going on, uh, we have our HITS guardrail contract. Uh, right now they have completed 69 of the 75 guardrail HITS uh, that have been identified. Uh, we have the Richmond Road bike path sidewalk improvements. Uh, that project has been awarded um, and notice to proceed has been given. However, there are some lead times on some items, so it'll be a little while before they get started. That has a fixed completion date of October 31st, 2024. Uh, the latex um, overlay, that uh, has started uh, all of the routes, Route 30 and Route uh, Monticello, 5,000, uh, have been overlaid however there still are some uh, markings and markers to be uh, applied our plant mix asphalt overlay uh, project that has been awarded and uh, notice proceed giving however the contract will not start until August um, and completion on that will be in November uh, a few routes to mention in that is 60 east um, around the uh, I guess it's Stratford Road to the east side of Nolan Boulevard, uh, 60 West, um, there at the pavement joint at Lightfoot Road uh, to the uh, line there at Stratford Road. Uh, we got si uh, 603 northbound from the train tracks to Richmond Road, uh, 610 River, um, between Riverside Drive and Little Creek Dam, and 645. Uh, there at the railroad tracks at Richmond Road uh, to James City, York County line. Uh, 658, uh, that's the joint there um, at Long Hill and ends there at Richmond Road. And then 715, which is uh, North Riverside Road to Holly Lane. Uh, we have Route 199 uh, ramp tree and brush removal. Um, that has been completed. <coughs> uh, we have bridge replacement over Diaskins Creek. It's still under construction. Uh, they are working on the temporary bridge abutments and, uh, and we'll be working on uh, the temporary bridge access trestles. Um, we have highway safety improvement project that's uh, for unsignalized intersections going on. We identified 11 intersections that they're doing mostly sign and marking uh, updates. Uh, we have started a project over in Parkside Lane and Two Rivers Road. Um, it's a pavement, curb, and drainage uh, project. Um, concrete Works is starting July 10th 
for that project. And then Route 60 between Route 30 and New Kent Line, um, we're going to, we are working on a project um, that is going to line a bunch of the cross drains, uh, drainage cross drains underneath that road, and we have identified three cross drains that need to be replaced. Leading up to next summer, we're going to do a unbonded concrete overlay for those two concrete sections, east and westbound on 60 through that stretch from Anderson's Corner to the New Kent line. So this project sort of leads up to um, a, a project that we're planning for next year. Uh, completed projects, um, we have the sidewalk repair uh, for the Safe House to School on Ironbound was done. Long Hill Road widening projects done. Old Town Road, Long Hill, Rev Share, that was part of that project's complete. Uh, Skiss Creek Connector uh, complete. Uh, Toano sidewalk access repair and replacement was completed. Uh, Route 199 east and west retaining wall completed. And we got bridge repairs, patching, waterproofing, epoxy that we did on Monticello, Route 199 and Route 31. Um, and that did the epoxy overlay and substructure rehab. That's complete. Some of the upcoming uh, smart scale projects, uh, we've got the Long Hill uh, shared use path, still working on that one. Uh, the Kroger Road widening uh, there from the library to Route 60. Uh, Pocahontas Trail, we're still working on that. And we have the Jamestown uh, Scotland Ferry uh, transfer bridge project coming. And um, we have an eight SIP unsignalized intersection improvements uh, that we have. And then the FDR, which is a full, um, full payment reclam reclamation. Um, we put it out three times. We did not get bids that we could uh, award. So we we're going to turn around and November, December of this year, put that project back out, back out, um, and hopefully we will receive better pricing. Uh, and also coming down the road is what we call the Gap C, which is the I-64 eastbound and westbound widening projects, about eight and a half miles, the last portion left of 64 uh, before you get to the New Kent County line. Um, the segment A, which is uh, in the Richmond district, uh, is going through procurement now. Um, and then the gap C will be the one that follow after that. And then the middle section, which they call gap B, um, will be the last section built to connect everything from Richmond to uh, Hampton Roads. Uh, safety County projects. Uh, we completed West Providence Road cross drain replacement. Uh, we did the uh, Newtown Wofford Lane sidewalk repair project. Uh, we completed the Windsor uh, Forest drop inlet um, SIPP projects. Uh, we completed the Ironbound Road sidewalk repair project, and we also are working on Route 199, and that's daylighting signs. Um, I don't know if you've seen the equipment out there on 199 where they're cutting the trees to daylight the signs. Looks pretty good. A uh, couple that are uh, in the queue is the uh, 143 uh, cross drain structural failure spray liner project, um, and then also uh, the Goodrich Durfee CIPP project, and we'll do those through quick quotes. Uh, just uh, we have that signed up for FY24. Um, so FY24, we have the Route um, 5, 614, and the Route 30 and 746, no left turns. That is under design, so uh, just to let you know that's still, still working on design for that, and uh, that will be... Uh, a split between county safety funding and uh, secondary six-year plan money. Uh, traffic studies that were completed in this quarter. Uh, we did the Cranston Mill Pond. Um, I guess it was upsize the existing warning, winding road signs, the signs out there for warning uh, safety-wise. Um, we also did an HSIP unsignalized intersection for Long Hill Road, which uh, provided us with recommendations for new signage, marking, stuff of that nature uh, at the unsignalized intersections on Long Hill Road. We had the uh, intersection safety uh, review for news and ironbound, uh, which is right there at the light at the park. That did not come back as any recommended changes. Um, and then we had the Grove area legal litter uh, signage that came back with um, placing uh, 
litter is illegal signage on multiple streets in the Grove area, uh, something that we've been dealing with uh, for a while now. Um, land use update, uh, we have issued a total of 75, um, let me take that back. We've done 75 plan reviews uh, this fiscal year. That's an increase of 12 since the last time I was here. Um, we've issued 285 permits for utility uh, work on the right of way. Um, that's 89 more than it was three months ago when I was here. And uh, we've only closed 80 uh, since um, since we this year, and which is only 19 more than the last time I was here. So. Um, that concludes my transportation update, and uh, be glad to take any comments or questions at this time. Questions? I say, um, I want to thank you for the work over in West Providence. I know it was very frustrating. What did you guys actually find that was causing the problem over there? That I mean, because it was that was uh, took forever to try to figure out why. Well, the you're right. We went. We we looked long and hard. Um, tried different things. Even worked with. Uh, with JCSA on cutting the water off to see where the water was coming from. And it, it's really just underground aquifers. Okay. Um, it wasn't a leaking utility. So uh, it was just pressure, outside pressure of those structures, making the water infiltrate through those separated joints. So when we, we made sure that they were sealed good when we replaced it. And hopefully, uh, hopefully it won't be in the road wherever it shows its face again, you know. Thank you. Certainly. Um, Mr. Carroll, first, uh, thanks uh, for the uh, update and uh, for the information about uh, the <coughs> progress on uh, Goodrich Durfee. Um, you said it, that would be a project that uh, sounded like it was going to go pretty quickly. In terms FY24, of so that starts July. It's right. in our FY24 plan. Right. I don't have the exact date, but um, we're going to do it by contract, so it's just a quick quote, so it's not a long, drawn-out process. So. Great. Well, the earlier we get, can get done, that would be great. Um, it's, it's number two on our on our project good. list. Glad um, to hear that for FY24. Great. And I was also want, wondering about uh, uh, the intersection of uh, Neckerland and Gatehouse Farms, Gatehouse yeah, Boulevard. I, 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 somebody should have gone and talked to them. Um, yeah, on both sides, there were some problems out there with yeah, uh, with yeah, drainage. Yeah, they did some repairs, and yeah. even after you and I talked, they went right. back out there and did some repairs. But right. I think there's some. But I think there was some a, leaking there, joints or something somewhere. There, in there seemed to have been a misunderstanding somewhere along the line between um, the, the crew that went out and uh, the homeowners uh, in terms of uh, what, which side of the uh, intersection was being addressed. Um, Initially, but the second yeah. time they went out there, it was both sides. Okay. Mm -hmm. But but there is some issues going on out there that they're working. So it's not it's not complete. Right. Okay. Great. Glad to hear that there's still work uh, yeah. in progress on that one. Um, last time you were here, I, I'd asked about uh, whether any of the um, issues that we dealt with on uh, in Rolling Woods uh, had uh, made it uh, to uh, conclusion. Um, as I've looked around the neighborhood, I haven't seen much going on and some uh, aggravation of some of the problems that were there already, uh, um, worsening of ruts and cracking right. and uh, potholes and, and some so, drainage issues. Yeah, and you and I looked at that and a couple yeah. of things there. We have slurry seal, that was, it, that project was done yeah, right. uh, seven years ago, I think now. So it's getting to the end of its life, you know, where it's starting to scale a Some little bit. Some would say it might have <laughs> um, and then we had have, an early demise. <laughs> and then we had the, uh, the um, I want to say utility uh, settlements mm -hmm. across the roadway as well. Right. We are. Let me check. Um, let me check and see if that is in next year's schedule. Okay. Um, but I'll get back with you on that. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. Hey, how are you? Good. Thank you so much for coming out and giving all the great information. Um, and I have seen some surveying and that type of thing going on at 614 and um, 5, which I really appreciate. Um, did I know that Mr. Smith reached out about the bike paths and, and you addressed that in an email. I just want to acknowledge that we that VDOT does work on clearing debris from the bike paths. Thank you for that. Um, a few things that I have been concerned about, and I know I've spoken with Mr. Stevens, and I think the two of you have spoken, the where the bridge work was done on Monticello, um, Monticello, um, the the water was coming very dangerously out into um, the other lane. And 
it seemed to do a little better this past storm. I was not out riding after, the roads at 2 o'clock this morning, so I don't know. After this past storm, we went out there and we told it. But what I say is we pulled it. We cut the shoulder so the water can get off the road. Okay. But we have a project scheduled. Um, they'll have a mini excavator out there and actually peel back that shoulder underneath the guardrail. So over the years, the shoulder's built up underneath the guardrail, which is not allowing the water to escape through the okay. shoulder that way. Okay. Um, but they have that on their schedule. Um, the machine actually came in this week, so it's uh, something they'll get to fairly quickly. Okay, yeah, I was really, at the one point when I had pulled over to take a picture, people were going into the other lane or they, you know, they're slamming on their brakes. It just was not a good situation. And as a temporary fix, they had gone out and done some, like, shovel ditches to try to get the water off, but it doesn't take much for those to fill back up. Sure, and, and we've and gotten a lot of rain. So. Yeah, yeah, but, I mean, it, it, they did address it the first time. It's just... It doesn't take much for it to fill back up, and it's such a slight grade there. It doesn't take a whole lot. But um, I think once we get all the shoulder cut out underneath the guardrail, that water should be able to, you know, release off the pavement. Great. Um, I do want the sidewalk to schools work is really exciting, watching that, and I think that's going to be great. And just, you know, um, once school opens, um, We'll, we'll just have to really work with people to make them. You, there's lots of warning out there um, on Ironbound and on actually five. Uh, there's going to be a cross, too, so we just have to get everybody to pay attention. Uh, one, if you could have somebody check the traffic light at um, Route 5 in Monticello, where it, um, like you're turning to go to Governor's Land, you're coming off of five, you can go either way. There's a tree that's going into the traffic light out okay. there. And then um, Mr. Hipple was kind enough, we, we split Jolly Pond. Um, I did hear, I've heard from a few residents that um, there are lots of potholes on the back part of Jolly Pond, which does, as you know, get a lot of usage because the other side of Jolly Pond is not open. So it's on the side? It's on the, the side, with side, the same say. side with the, um, with the, the, the non, schools. Non -school, the school side? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. But you go back. <laughs> I'm with you. Okay. I'm with you. I just didn't know what, you yep. know, it, now right. that it's closed, yes. which Thank end. Because I was thinking we just paved the other side. Yeah. This is the side that people can drive on. So, thank you. The um, Barnes Road, I know we talked about that as far as traffic. And um, were you able to, I know you haven't put anything together that quick. I haven't, no. Okay. I haven't yet. If you'll keep that on your sure. radar. Um, let's see, there's still that pothole on Richmond Road before you get to Old Town. And um, it's a, it's a, um, a, I guess it's a manhole there that they patched and has settled. And when you get in that turn lane to go on Old Town, leaving Lightfoot hitting it towards Williamsburg area, everybody's hitting that same thing. So I, a little bit of patch in there would probably take care of that situation. And I know you'd um, address the the tree limbs. Was that taken care of in the Haven as far as? I believe so. I'll okay. Have to double check. But. Okay, I haven't heard anything else. I figured it all been. Usually if I don't hear anything, it's good news. Yeah, well, they started <laughs> it. Let me say that. And they're still working on Forge right now. Okay, great. Um, but I don't know how far they've gotten. Um but yeah, that, I think we're we're on we're on the path to success if we're not there yet. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. That's all I had. All right. Any anybody else? Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Have a great. Thank day. you. Thank Wonderful you. day. Thank you. All right. Number D is our consent calendar. Our consent calendar consists of acceptance of additional finance for year 2024 funding allocations for social services in the amount of one hundred and twenty-one thousand four hundred and sixty-three. Number two, contract award for 485578 for James City County Marina Stage 2 dredging. Um, number three, grant award for 228000 for the 2023 American Rescue Plan Act Law Enforcement Equipment Grant Program. Number four, grant award for 283500 James City County Child Health Incentive. Um, number five, minutes adoption. Number six, Personnel Policy and Procedures Manual Chapter 5 Update. And number seven, Resolution of Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance Violation at 
2884 Chickahominy Road and 7090 Church Lane, Little Creek Reservoir. And number eight, resolution benefit discharge detection and elimination of ordinance violation at 7103 Pocahontas Trail. Are there any items that anyone wishes to pull or may I have a motion? Motion to approve. Motion for approval. I'll call, sir, please. Ms. Larson? Aye. Mr. McGlennon? Aye. Mr. Eisenhower? Aye. Ms. Sadler? Aye. Mr. Ruffel? Aye. Motion carries. All right. Board directives? Anything for board directives? Yes, um, yes sir. Mr. Chairman, I, I would last like to ask that uh, we um, agree to send a, a, to create a resolution uh, in um, July of this year. Uh, the James City County Master Gardeners will be celebrating their 40th anniversary and uh, would like to do a resolution to recognize them uh, for presentation to the group. Great. Can you that happen? Yes, sir. Great. Any others? Are we doing board requests now? Is you that can go right in the board um, requests and consideration. Yeah. I'd like to um, just offer my deepest sympathies to um, Ellen Guida, who is the chair of our EDA. Uh, she recently lost her husband. Uh, we attended a beautiful memorial service that she held this weekend, so I think I could probably speak on behalf of all of us that we extend our deepest sympathies to her. Um, I attended, along with my family, the Clean County Commission Annual Picnic for those who have volunteered this year, and I was very happy that Ms. Peg Borman recognized my young grandson, Connor, for being out there on Anderson's Corner. He went out there, it scared me to death. I thought he was going to get killed, but he was out there picking up those God bless it cigarette butts that are out there, and it was a good lesson learned for him, but he was out there with myself and Barbara Knoll, who's on our planning commission, so I was just thrilled that he was taking an interest. It's good to see young people take an interest in keeping James City County beautiful. And now it's, it's the time of year that we're approving wage increases and just like to take this special opportunity to continue sending our thanks to all of our staff for everything that you all do to help us to answer all of our phone calls that we call you with constantly and appreciate all that you do for us and for the citizens of the county. So thanks to all of you. Appreciate it. That's it. Um, fairly busy last couple of weeks. Um, uh, Juneteenth um, celebration for that county put on out at Freedom Park was uh, really impressive. Um, I, was, uh, I, I think uh, Mr. Temple was there, and, and uh, John, you were there with with me for for that. Uh, um, it had a good good turnout, and I, I got to tell you, our our staff does a wonderful job with that every year. I actually look forward to it next year. I think we're going to try to plan to do it in conjunction with the NAACP. Uh, so that would be a, a really a, a, a good good thing, I think. Um, did attend new employee and orientation on June 15th uh, at Croker Library at 8.15 in the morning, which for me is pretty early. Uh, and then I went directly from there down to uh, the Yorktown uh, Coast Guard Station where we had a change of command ceremony. Uh, and I attended in my capacity as part of the Chamber of Military Affairs Committee uh, and got to meet uh, Captain Scott Ray, who just took over command of uh, Yorktown. And it's nice to have a good working relationship between the Chamber of Commerce, our business community, and uh, local government, as well as with the uh, with the military in our area. Uh, he was looking forward to uh, work, working with us. Um, had a ribbon cutting over in Newtown, Dream Machine, which is a virtual reality arcade right on uh, Main Street, 5128 Main Street in Newtown. Mr. Print Montiero is the owner. Um, went and did that uh, on the June 15th. So 15th of June was a busy day for me. <laughs> um, also attended the Will uh, Barnes picnic and, and uh, really a good turnout and really a well done. I, I have to c congratulate uh, um, Peg on, on the job she does on that. Um, we had a workforce council meeting on June 21st and I did send a message to the board talking about the, uh, the budget that uh, we've gotten a tremendous increase in, in the budget for workforce housing, workforce uh, development that is coming from the U.S. Navy with regard to a lot of the offshore wind programs and a lot of the maritime programs that they're, they're going to be sub subsidizing. So a big, big boost for about the next five or six years. Uh, uh, we're probably absolutely the number one workforce board in the, in the Commonwealth. Um, we had a town hall meeting with uh, Chairman Hipple and I over at Ford's Colony. Uh, we had about, about 60 people, I think, in attendance. Uh, and uh, they kept us busy for about an hour and a half. Uh, and so it was a, a very interesting, very productive evening. And then the uh, Chamber of Commerce had their uh, annual meeting over at uh, uh, Kings Mill. Uh, and I will say that uh, the James City County was the Health Promoter of the Year Award for that one, so I'm very proud of that. 
um, uh, Scott was there, and Chris was there, and I believe Ruth, you were there, and John. And, um, so it was um, it was nice to, to be able to get out amongst some of our, our business people and, and uh, watch the acknowledgement of the awards that uh, they got. So that was it for. And I'll just jump in on just a couple of quick things uh, uh, that uh, wanted to really compliment the staff on putting together that program for the Juneteenth celebration out at Freedom Park. Uh, and uh, also uh, to mention that uh, uh, I thought that the um, Development Review Committee of the Planning Commission um, was kind of put in a, in a challenging situation last week when uh, uh, they were holding a meeting to discuss uh, plans for development in Kingsmill uh, that were fairly conceptual in nature and where the developers said basically they wanted to come in and sort of lay out what they were thinking about just to get some informal feedback, no votes or anything of that kind. But sort of indicating the high level of interest in that uh, in those proposals, there were about 225 people in attendance at that meeting, which was supposed to be over in the large conference room in Building A, uh, but instead was moved here. Uh, and I thought that uh, it was a, an excellent uh, meeting, uh, especially in terms of the performance of the DRC members who were put in a position that they hadn't really anticipated um, being in. Uh, but where there was also an opportunity to get some real feedback both from the developer and from the community about the original plans that uh, were uh, submitted by the developer. So I just wanted to acknowledge the good work that uh, Stephen Rogers and the members of the DRC did at that meeting. That's it. Uh, just a couple of follow-up comments on the Will Barnes uh, picnic, which was great. And I want to thank Peg and, and all of her volunteers. I also have to say staff, Grace and her staff, they, you know, they were putting up tables, chairs. It was, there was no, tra uh, they did not serve on paper plates or we ate with silverware and. Um, Off napkins. Yep. And, and they took it, they took that back and washed and took care of it all. So kudos to staff for going above and beyond, especially on a weekend. So I really appreciated that. Um, just a quick note that at the Chamber Awards, Billsburg uh, won Small Business of the Year Award. That they, um, they were in a tie uh, with the business in the city of Williamsburg, Orange Theory Fitness, but i got to give them a shout-out because I'm a longtime <laughs> member. So um, that was pretty neat. But that was, um, that was really great that they were, they were both recognized, especially Billsburg. And I hated to meet, miss the Juneteenth. I've been every year except for this year. And so I'm, it is a very well-done program, and I have no doubt that this year's was done as well. Thank you. Thank you. Looks like y'all covered everything that I was on. and y'all. <laughs> We've had a busy couple of weeks. Um, since uh, we'll probably meet after the 4th, I want to wish everybody a happy 4th of July. That's coming up. Be careful. Be safe. Have some fun. Enjoy yourselves. Sit back and relax a little bit and all the work that you put forth and everything you do. So it's time to sit back and relax and have a little fun. I, uh, uh -huh. I did have just one thing. Sorry. Yes, um, I see interim chief Dahlman here and we are going to be attending the swearing in of the new chief on Friday. I just want to say thank you. You've done an excellent job leading this department over the past months and it's very obvious in the comments that we've seen and heard from the officers and I just want to personally thank you for that going above and beyond and um, I just really appreciate it. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Mr. Chair, members of the board, just a reminder, hurricane season, our storm last night at least brought that maybe to mind with all the storm warnings coming out. And you know, our guidance to our community is always be prepared to look after yourself, uh, your family, your pets, uh, have me medications on hand for three to seven days is sort of the guidance to be able to get through those events as they might come ac across our community. So I'll just put that reminder out. And to your point, wish everybody safe and happy 4th of July. So thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, next we'll look at going into closed session. I'll need a motion to enter a closed session in consideration of the disposition of public held real estate where discussion and open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiation strategy of a public body. Pass the public or parcels located at 95 and 101 Mounts Bay Road and 6745 Homicide Parkway. Um, pursuing a section 2.2-3711A3 of the Code of Virginia and consideration of personnel matters and evaluation of performance of the county administrator and the county um, attorney pursuing a section 2.2-3711A3 
A1 of the Code of Virginia and consideration of a personal matter of appointments to county boards and commissions pursuant to Section 2.2-3711A1 of the Code of Virginia. I have a motion. So moved. So moved. I'll call, please, sir. Ms. Sadler? Aye. Mr. Eisenhower? Aye. Mr. McGladden? Aye. Ms. Larson? Aye. Mr. Hipple? Aye. Motion carries. We're in closed session now. Okay.
All right, I'll go ahead and bring the uh, Board of Supervisors back in order of closed session. May I have a certification, please, sir? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I move to certify that we only spoke about those items we indicated we would speak about. Roll call, sir. Ms. Sadler? Aye. Mr. Eisenhower? Aye. Mr. McGlennon? Aye. Ms. Larson? Aye. Mr. Hipple? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. All right, we have some actions to report out. You want me to start with the, uh, the appointments? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, can we do all of these at w in one? Okay, good. Uh, move the uh, following appointments uh, to Community Action Agency, Ms. Christine Payne, for the uh, term that expires September 25th, 2027. To the Historical Commission, the appointment of Chris Hamilton Petties, uh, and Mark Jabaski, and then nomination for new terms for Brittany Vole, Michael Milner, and M Michael Westfall, all for terms that end June 30th, 2026. For Colonial Services, Juvenile Services Commission, uh, reappointment of Rebecca Vinroot for a term ending Ju June 30th, 2027. For reappointment to the Water Board, Denise Kirschbaum for a term ending June 30th, 2027. And for the Williamsburg Regional Library Board, a reappointment of Grace Boone for a term ending June 30th, 2027. And I so move. Sir, motion on the floor. Roll call. Ms. Sadler? Aye. Mr. Eisenhower? Aye. Mr. McGlennon? Aye. Ms. Larson? Aye. Mr. Hibble? Aye. Motion carries. Report All right. Out. Yes, I move a motion to adopt the resolution for an authorization of the salary increase and approve the 5% salary increase for the county administrator and the county attorney. Motion on the floor. Roll call, please. Uh, Ms. Sadler? Aye. Mr. Eisenhower? Aye. Mr. McGlennon? Aye. Ms. Larson? Aye. Mr. Hipple? Aye. All right, next I'll need an adjournment until 5 p.m. on July 11, 2023 for a regular business meeting. So moved. So moved. Ms. Sadler? Aye. Mr. Eisenhower? Aye. Mr. McGlennon? Aye. Ms. Larson? Aye. Mr. Hill? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. All right. Aye. 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 Now I need a motion to adopt the resolution and approve the 5% increase, wage increase for the JCSA general manager. So moved. Mr. Powell, please call the roll. Aye. 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 I need a motion for adjournment until 5 p.m. on July 11, 2023 for the regular meeting. All so in favor? Moved. Aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned. Final.